We're here at ITU Telecom World 2014 in Doha in the state of Qatar and I'm very pleased to be joined by Minister Omobola Johnson who is the Minister for Communication Technology for Nigeria. Minister, very nice to see you again. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here. Thanks very much for being in the studio with us. Now, I wanted to talk about the central theme here at ITU Telecom World 2014. It's future in focus. What developments in technology policy or business do you see as key to the near future? Mm. I think if you look at it from the Nigeria context, like all over the world, the future means different things to different people. And for us, having the future in focus is really three things. First of all, it's about uh, infrastructure. Uh, making sure that we have the right technologies in terms of building out our broadband infrastructure, the combination of microwave, satellite, fiber and all of that, and ensuring that it's the right technologies that we have given the differences in the terrain of a very large country like Nigeria. But I think also we need to look at the future in terms of services, and that is ensuring that we have, if, if, the, if the internet or the you know, broadband and telecommunications is going to be part of the future that we see for ourselves, then ensuring that as we build this infrastructure, we have the appropriate kind of content that will actually attract more Nigerians to this, um, uh, to this infrastructure. So that's around uh, the services, what kind of services are we providing, uh, what kind of content is available on the internet. And then finally, you know, the future, when I listen to uh, a few of the uh, debates that have gone on over the last two days, one of the big things that's going to happen is jobs and skills. The skills that are, that are, that are required for the future are very different from the skills that we have now. So how do we as, as countries, as sectors, begin to prepare more people to be, um, to be engaged uh, effectively in this new digital economy that we're all building? So the skills or the jobs that existed today will not exist, uh, don't exist tomorrow. So how do we ensure that we have the right kind of data scientists, uh, network engineers, people that will help us to ensure that this digital economy and this future actually comes to pass? Now our uh, motto, let's call it, uh, ITU uh, is connecting the world. Mm -hmm. I just uh, wanted to talk to you about broadband. Obviously it's a, a very important part of uh, your communication strategy, mm -hmm. I can imagine. How uh, can universal broadband, in your opinion, be best achieved? Well, I, I don't know if I can answer best, but I can talk a little bit about what we're doing in Nigeria, which I hope that you know, by the time we're done, other countries will emulate this and see this as best practice. Um, as you know, the industry is liberalized, so we don't have any government intervention per se in the telecoms industry. So what we're doing, first of all, is to ensure that the telcos are covering uh, as much of, uh, of the country as, as they can. And clearly, they're only interested in the commercial parts of the country where they can make a profit. What we're also doing is that with the Universal Service Provision Fund, we have just funded a big uh, access gap study. And today, for the first time, we know exactly where we have pockets of uh, poor connectivity or no connectivity at all. We've actually costed what it would be for us to put voice and data in those particular communities, which are communities where the telcos may not make money, but they're communities all the same when they, that we need to bring into this new digital economy because it's all about inclusiveness. So using the USF funds to really uh, support the development of um, of broadband in in those in those areas. The third thing we're doing, which is actually quite important, again working with the telcos, is that we find that when you look at Nigeria, they focus on a few pockets. So the big commercial nerve centres. We are licensing what we call infracos, which are infrastructure companies that will have the mandate or the license to roll out fibre. But we've made it on a regional, on a geographical basis. So we've divided the country into seven geographical areas and we will have one license for each of those geographical areas and the company that wins the license will basically have the mandate to build fibre, metro fibre particularly, in that particular region. So by these three things we will ensure that we cover the country both in terms of the commercial areas which are really not a problem, secondly in terms of ensuring that we have a geographical balance even for those areas that are commercial but somehow the telcos aren't interested in them and thirdly, for the areas that are not commercial at all, but there's still a need to bring in the millions of Nigerians, because as you know, or as you may not know, about 50% 50 50 of our population lives in the rural areas, and these are areas that are, see, are seen as unserved or underserved, so we need to use the USP funds to bring those people into the internet economy. I want to talk to you about partnerships. What role do partnerships have in this new disruptive age? It's a really important role because, um, like I said, you know, government, yes, we're seen as the regulators, the policy makers, the telcos are seen as the implementers, but it's, it's, no, it's not really a regulator-regulator relationship. It really has got to be a partnership relationship. So, you know, we developed the broadband plan together with the industry. It wasn't something that we did by ourselves. We did that together with the industry, and as we're implementing, it's a partnership in implementation. And the way that uh, government comes in in this partnership is that we see ourselves very much as a, um, uh, as, as a catalyst. 
So, for instance, we will be the catalyst to say we'll give a subsidy in these particular areas and that we hope that the telcos will come in. We've used that also in, the, in our innovation, incubation, ideation space. Government has come in as a catalyst. We've built a number of um, innovation hubs. We've put in the infrastructure, the fast broadband, uh, the computers and the physical infrastructure. But then we've more or less handed this over to the private sector to run on our behalf. So that's where partnerships come in. It's very important. And even within governments, and I think that's what we're seeing in the discussions we're having, um, ministers of ICT should not really be seen as the only people that are developing this digital economy. There's a need to partner with the ministries of finance, of health, of education, of agriculture, because ICTs cut across uh, all of these areas. And we're very used to working in silos, in our little portfolios, but there's a need to actually partner within government as well as partnering with government and the private sector. Now Nigeria has uh, got a, a great pavilion here. Mm. It's been making a lot of noise. A lot of a uh, lot of uh, people have been attending, and I know there's been a, yeah. a lot of uh, conversation going on there. Mm. I just wanted to find out from you your own perspective. What's the value of attending events such as ITU Telecom World? Mm. You're right. Nigeria has got a big pavilion. We have a very big presence at ITU every year. But the real value that we see is it, it's in two ways. First of all, um, when you come here and I speak with other ministers of ICT and I hear what they're doing and we, you know, we have these conversations where you bring in experts from all over the world to talk about the future, whatever it is. In a sense, it validates what we're doing. So if you're completely on the wrong track from what the rest of the world is doing, you know that you've got to come, you know, you've got to come back in line. But what it's done for us is that it really has validated what we're doing. So broadband is important, digital skills are important, and that's what everybody around the world is doing. So it validates. I think the second thing it does for us is that it, it enables us to learn. So the number of countries that are ahead of Nigeria, uh, you know, they've, they've gone past the broadband infrastructure, so they're looking at content development and ideation and all of that. So we can learn, I mean, like yesterday, we're talking about future technologies, nanotechnology, biotechnology, augmented reality. These are things that you don't usually think about in your day-to-day -day job. But just being here in this space and being able to speak to experts, again, you go back and you think, well, how does this impact my present context? Or how do I bring this into my context? So it does two, two things. First of all, validates what we're doing. And then secondly, it helps us to think ahead and see what we should be doing uh, in, in the very near future. Well, it's been great to see you here again. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks.